All right. Well, welcome everybody to UPA Live for uh, September. Uh, we're excited to have a special guest today, Dave Broberg, who works with us here in, in uh, athletics. Dave has a special distinction. He's the only person at the university that we trust with our raw files. So that's uh, wow. that should say something about his character. But Dave is the assistant AD of creative design and branding. Uh, he runs basically all the graphic design elements for the athletic department and all the crews that work there. Uh, and the guy is an expert in Photoshop and especially cutouts, something that he does day in, day out for 24 hours a day. So I'm going to have Dave show us a few different techniques. If you have any questions, go ahead and post them in the chat and we'll jump jump in. Go ahead, Dave. Okay. Thanks, Jaron. Uh, I had no idea I was the only one you trusted, but uh, best, best compliment I've received in a while. Thanks, man. Absolutely. Um, so, and he has to trust me. We've worked together for 20 plus years, so we have built a great relationship and thankful for that. But today, uh, Jaron just kind of wanted me to go over cutouts specifically, and I'm going to kind of show my, uh, the things I've, I've learned how to do that effectively and efficiently. And then also I'll touch a little bit on compositing and how to use those cutouts and place it um, in a design so that it looks very, uh, like it fits and it's organic. So I'm just going to jump right into stuff if that's okay with everybody. And uh, as we go through it, I'll, I'll pause at certain points and just ask for questions or um, if you guys have any uh, thing you want to add or uh, that kind of stuff. So to start, I'm going to share my screen here. And is that working? Are we yeah. sharing? Okay. Yeah, that's great. Thanks, Jaron. Um, so when I know that I am doing going to use a photo for a cutout and use it in designs, my experience has taught me to shoot it on black. Um, and the reason for that is when I'm doing the cutout process, and, and I'll and I'll show that to you. Uh, it, it just the Photoshop in their subject select tool, which is right here, and we'll we'll use that a lot just does a better job on a subject that is has a black background for the most part. There are some exceptions to that, but overall I found, found time and time again, just how much better a black background works um, as, as long as it is lit in a way that gives you nice separation. And, and Jaron and Nate will have to address that part of it and the lighting and, and helping um, the subject really jump off that black background. But to start after how we kind of do a photo shoot um, or how we kind of, uh, my, uh, how I kind of work is after we've done a photo shoot, I'll go through and pick all the good shots, bring them into camera raw, and um, and then export them as JPEG. So I have a folder full of processed images already um, gone through of the good images of that I, uh, that I want of an athlete. And then from there, I'll just pick my favorites. So that's kind of how I whittle down um, to the shots I take. But I've always got a folder of already processed images uh, rather than keeping it always in the raw. Um, so that's kind of how we start. Then we pick one that we that we like. We we start the cutout process. So. Uh, in this case, I'm going to cut this girl out, and then we'll also cut out this girl as well. Um, her hair is a little easier. I, I know Jaron really wanted me specifically touch on hair and just how difficult it is to, to cut out hair. Um, and so with our female athletes, we have to do that quite a bit. I, uh, in my day-to-day -day job, I'm primarily over football. And so I love a good football helmet and how easy it makes it to, uh, to cut out versus a female athlete with lots of flowing hair, but we're going to start with Olivia here and, um, and, and do a cutout. So the first thing I'm going to do is duplicate the background. So command J um, and then I'm going to fill it with a 50% gray. So um, I'm going to hit shift F5 and fill with 50% gray on that background layer. This helps me know where I've got some unclean edges. Um, so I've, I, we always do our cutouts with the background at 50% gray. It just helps us see if there's lights or darks um, that are not completely cut out. Then I click back on the layer and I'm gonna go up under here under select and you guys have probably used this subject select is uh, that Photoshop is really, or Adobe has really refined this tool so well. Um, and it's been such a time saver in so many ways. I love it, but we'll go ahead and run that, um, see what it does in this case, cause there's really good separation. 
you can see as I zoom in, um, you know, we're pretty clean on those edges. Uh, if I've missed a spot, I may come in with the um, quick selection tool. And oops, that's not the right quick selection tool. I'm not on my computer here. Oops. And hit that plus. There we go. Just add that in. Uh, it looks like it missed this spot here. So with the quick selection tool, I'll just kind of modify that selection quickly. Make sure we got everything. This is something I'm going to fix later, if you can see in between those fingers here. But um, I'm going to leave that there for now and, and just fix it later by hand. Um, the rest of it looks pretty good to me. So once that's done, I'm going to come down here and uh, select the, add the, make it a layer mask, that selection. And she's separated, and you can see that 50% gray really helps show up on those uh, the edges here. If you can see my cursor along her leg. So once that's done, I'm going to just at this point go clean up. I'm going to take a little peek at her hair and know that I'm going to come back there and clean that up. But um, I usually save it for last, just like how I eat a meal. I, I save the vegetables for last. And and uh, we save the bad stuff for last and eat the good stuff first. So we'll come in here and I'll, I'll change to my brush tool. And um, cursor's having a tough time showing up on. And then as you guys know, if you hit the control and option keys, um, this is, if you don't know this already, it's the, the key to everything. Holding those two control and option keys down and I click and drag left to right is the size of my brush. The hardness of my brush is up and down holding down the control and option keys. And so the hardness of your brush is really important here. Um, depending on the areas that are in focus, the brush is gonna be softer areas that, or excuse me, the areas that are in focus, the brush is gonna be harder. And the areas that are out of focus, I'm gonna soften that brush. But in this case, I usually try to keep it around 90, hardness of 90%, somewhere in that vicinity, sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less, uh, as I come in and just clean up those edges. And as you look over here on my uh, color, I'm obviously painting with black to turn it off on the mask. And, and then I'll, I'll hit the X key now and then because I'll miss a spot or I need to paint something back. So you guys are, I'm, I'm sure, kind of familiar with those kind of tools. So hit X again, and I'm just going to paint that out. Now, I'm not going to do this whole thing. This would be tedious and boring, but you can kind of see how I've come along here and clean up my selection so I don't have any fringing so that when I do use it in design, it looks like it's organic and fits into that design very nicely. And it was made to fit in there. Um, telltale sign of someone that doesn't know what they're doing on cutouts is when they haven't come in and cleaned up their, their edges nicely and taken away the black or the white or whatever it is. It's, uh, you know, we do do cutouts off of action photos and background, but it sure is a heck of a lot harder than taking a studio shot. So we try to always use studio shots when we know we need a cutout for a design or for a layout or something we're promoting. So you get the idea here. Um, you know, I'd come along here and just, you know, I can do it freehand like this, or I can hold down the shift key and go from point to point and it draws a straight line in between those points. So those are um, kind of the process that I use to go along and clean up an edge. And depending if, you know, if I'm in a hurry, and I know it's just for a web graphic, I may not clean up the edge quite as precisely as I'm doing here. Um, but if I know I may at some point use it in print or something bigger, I've got to clean up those edges nicely. All right, so you get that idea. Any questions at that point? Where I'm going to well, jump Dave, into hair next. Uh, how I would say, how much do you use this tool to cut out versus others? I mean, is this your primary way of cutting primary, out? Primary, yep, every so like, time, yep. And I think that a lot of people may have tried earlier versions of this and weren't happy with it, so they haven't used it, but it is incredible how it, accurate it is. It's come a long way. I mean, you can see it. The, the, uh, there's certain, there's a little roughness here that I'd clean up, but, um, you know, and some images are more better than others, but it, they, um, Adobe has come a long way with this tool in the last, uh, probably a year or two, they've, they've made some great headway. It just gets more and more accurate with each release of Photoshop. And, um, you know, I've tried a lot of other ways, but nothing, you know, just like the, uh, the rock song, nothing compares to you. Um, nothing compares to this tool, in my opinion. So, um, 
yeah. Any other thoughts, questions before we jump into hair? Let, let's let's look at the hair. Okay, let's do the hair. Embrace um, yourselves. So I will say this: there's no there's no perfect tool, uh, and it's and there's no perfect cut out of hair, but uh, we try and do the best we can. And in in the case of a shooting on a black background, the lighter the hair, uh, sometimes the the better when we, and I'll show you an, an instance where we have a darker haired um, athlete that it is harder. But let's say in this case, she does have some dark areas um, of her hair. And so what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to just hit command J and I'm going to duplicate that layer, turn off the original one. And then I'm just going to go into curves, which is command M. And I'm really going to blow out um, her. Now I'm not going to use this layer, obviously, but this is going to help me get a little better separation from the black background. So I'll just leave that and know that I've kept that other layer there for that already edited photo. So that helps me a little bit. And then this tool, um, okay, I need to go under, sorry. sorry this, is not, this is not my computer, so I, I don't have all my, um, all of his toys aren't set up. My yeah, we toys aren't set up. Office, I should have had so that. Sorry. Let's move this over. Makes here. it a little bit harder. Okay. Properties. Okay. Here we go. All right. So go under the properties palette over here. And then you want to be clicked on your mask. Once you have that, I want to click on this tool that's called select and mask. Everyone can follow me there. I click on that. And it brings up this tool and I want to see it in the view with the red overlay that helps me see it better. That's the, the, the view I prefer. And then I'm going to um, go into this tool up in the top right, if you can see that, the refine edge tool. And this is hit and miss. I'm going to try it first, but sometimes it's a miss. Sometimes it's a hit, but it just helps me refine that edge a little bit better. So I'm going to go in some of those areas where I want to separate it from that black. And as you can see, it's doing a decent job. Um, can you guys see that? Okay, yeah. Jaren, what I'm no, doing. No, that there. looks great. It's pretty yeah, good. It does, it's doing a pretty good job today. It's, um, it's, it's behaving well. Because well, and like I say, that knows. area you're working on right now, those are the kind of areas that just drive me crazy. You know, yeah. under the hair, it's under the fold. But as you can see, I'm coming in those areas. And because I bumped up the brightness of her hair a little bit, in that other layer, it helps bring a better separation from the black. And it's not perfect there in the middle, but it's it's better than it was. Um, these areas look pretty good to me at this point. So I'm, but I, and you can try changing the size of your brush too. Sometimes it gets a little different results from going bigger or smaller on the brush size as you do this. But it's finding those darker areas and um, eliminating those. It did a, pretty dang good job so um yeah that's pretty good you guys like that okay yeah follow me what i did there any questions about how to do that I, like i said i like to use the red view um, and make sure you're up over here on the um, refine edge brush tool seems to do the best thing and then once that's done we just hit okay and we're back and at this point i'm going to just drag if you can see right here I'm going to drag this mask over there. It says, do you want to replace the mask? Yes. And then I click off here, click that layer off, and I go back to my layer. And, um, and so you can kind of see yeah, it's not perfect. What I do at this point, I go back and make sure I'm select on the, the mask, not on the, you got to be real careful not to, to make sure you're not on the image, but you're just on the mask. And then I may go back and um, and, and freehand some of this, get a, maybe make my brush softer and I'm going to paint some of it back in. So I hit the X key. And if you look really quick, as I hit X, it toggles before between black and white. So I keep my fingers down there, my left hand down there. And then, um, excuse me. And I might paint some of that back in lightly where it, it kind of deleted some areas that maybe are hair that are just dark. Um, and as you can see, this is, this is not perfect. So what this tells me too, is I need to make sure 
I'm not cutting this out and putting it on a light background um, because you're going to get some funny things going on there. But I, I'll show you a couple of things of what you can do to make that better. So typically I try to find, uh, try to put at least the hair part on, on a darker background. So some of that, um, you know, I might darken the gray a little bit in my design or, or whatever I'm, I'm putting it in. But as it, as it's darker, you can see that that doesn't show doesn't really up quite matter, as yeah. much. Yeah. So I try to put it in a design that's darker in, in this type of a case. If I know I'm going on a white design, then yeah, maybe I would shoot the, the subject on a white background to begin with. Um, but typically we'll put it, you know, BYU is our brand colors blue. So we'll put it on a lot of our stuff on a blue background and it helps hide some of this hair flaws um, from what you're seeing. But then I'll come in here, I'll go back on the layer mask and with my brush, I'll probably clean some of that up. Excuse me, hit X. And with the softer edges and probably clean some of that up just by hand to make it look believable. Paint that back in. Um, that's looking kind of funny. So maybe I'll just paint some of that. But And maybe some of this back here I'll paint in as well just to make that a little more believable. Or I'll just come in here and <laughs> wipe it all out um because it's not looking great and and give it maybe a hard edge or areas that aren't as important because they don't need to know that something is missing from a cutout uh, they'll never know what's missing but so sometimes i'll do something like that and just kind of freehand some of those areas that you know i don't know kind of what i'll do um the other thing you can do uh, is click over here on, oh, and yeah, I'll show you this first. We've got to come up here. Always, for some reason, um, it always hands and armpits, it doesn't do a great job. So you've got to come in here by, by hand and kind of clean those up. Um, and you get the idea here. So, but always kind of these kind of corners, when you do subject select, it never does a perfect job. And so a lot of times I'm just cleaning up those kind of areas. Armpits, it's notorious for doing a crappy job. It's something about that kind of that V shape on an image. It has a tough time turning the corner. But so one thing you can do as well, a little tool I use a lot in my, when I go and throw this on a subject um, and let's just say I'm, let's just change the color here to a BYU blue. And just for demonstration purposes, um, oops, keep zooming out when I want to zoom in. So that's pretty good on there. One thing you can do is you can click on the selection and hold down the command key and select your layer mask. Then you can go up under here under your select and modify, and you want to contract it a pixel. Okay, so you want to under select modify your selection and contract it. You want to, so I want to come in inside from that by one pixel. And sometimes you can do two if you need it. I just hit that, come over to my mask. And then I have her selected, but I want to, um, if I fill with that layer right now, so I want to go under then selection. So I've come in one pixel. I want to inverse that selection and fill that with black. And what that does is it brings my selection in a pixel and it kind of eliminates some of this stuff up in the hair. Um, well, it also will do some of your edging on the, the rest of the body. Too, edging, right? yep, it will. That, that's a pretty quick way to do it. It, it. it can take away that fringing pretty quickly if you're in a hurry. So that's a quick, efficient way to take away that fringing. And when I'm doing just a quick web or excuse, a web or a social media graphic and I need a quick clean up, I'll use that contract thing quite a bit. I may come in here and fix her hair a little bit more and maybe just soften it. Um, but that's, I don't know, Jaren, do you think that's pretty good? Yeah, that looks nice. Um, and I might paint some of this stuff back that got taken before. You know, um, I'm painting it back with the with white and make sure that looks legitimate and clean. All right, hair, questions on that? 
Well, uh, there are a few questions. Uh, first right. of all, how long would you say that an edit like this takes you on average? Well, I'm just about done. So how long have we been doing it? Um, so on average, probably less than five minutes. Uh, I'd say 10 minutes, 10 to, 15, 10 to 15, if uh, I'm doing it real clean. If I'm in a hurry and I know I'm going to use it real small on just a social graphic one time, I can do it in five minutes. And that's and that's probably a really important point to make. You the you have to put proportional effort for proportional result. If it's on a billboard, you're going to go way deeper and be more precise versus a small web graphic, right? Correct. Um, um, and then you know, as you can see here, like some of the edges. If I know this is for print, I'm going to clean up some of those little pieces. But yeah, that little trick I showed you with the fringing, you can see it cleaned up everything along oh, totally. her shoe and. There was some fringing there, um, but just, you know, I, and then I'd come back and you could see I missed a little part there and I'm painting that back in with, but I'm just hitting and I'll paint that back in a little bit and just, I zoom in and look at my edges and make sure everything's clean. And um, that's, that's the gist of it. One Let of me, the questions that's yeah. there is, do you make the selects from all of the photos or does the photographer? um so i for the stuff i'm using i do yeah so yeah. jaron uh and his crew they just send me the raw files um i'll go through and select and i'll use photo mechanics select my favorites of the say there's a shoot a, we shot 100 pictures of this girl maybe 75 i'll go through and i'll pick my you know all the shots that are good and and that's like where her face looks good and her body shape is good. And, um, and so that's usually, you know, around 30, 35, 40, depending on how photogenic she is, but there's a lot of great body shots, but then they have, they just pull a funky face and, uh, you know, we can't use those. So I just pull the top, you know, 35, 40 from that shoot. I'll bring them all maybe. And sometimes that's more than that. Bring those all into um, camera raw, edit them, export them as JPEGs. And I've got my ready to go folder. Um, of shots for this particular athlete. So that was the other question is, is are you doing camera raw uh, or how are you, what's your editing process? I assume you're doing your basic, you know, edit in camera raw and then you're doing your cutout in Photoshop. Correct. Everything. Yeah. The basic edit is all in camera raw. Um, and typically, you know, there's, you know, there's some cropping, there's some color adjustments and uh, because we shoot that in the studio, the color adjustments and the lighting adjustments and, and such are pretty standard across the whole shoot. So it's it makes it for pretty quick editing. And, you know, there's some, sometimes, in, you know, their proximity to the light is a little bit different. So we'll adjust uh, exposure or whatever else in raw, but edit them in raw um, and then bring them in one by one as a JPEG into Photoshop where I do the cutout. Another question is, is do you ever make like a custom brush to paint back hair that has that texture? I haven't. Um, it's not a bad idea to explore that. I, I, um, but I've just used, you know, depending on the softness of my brush, uh, and it's usually a softer brush and when I'm painting it back in. Um, but you just, you know, there's, but uh, uh, maybe a, a, a brush that isn't, that is a little maybe rough around the edges would be a better, better play on that. So that's not a bad suggestion to play with and explore something I might try and do. So thank you. Um, do you have to copy a good face onto a different body ever, ever do a composite? Is that common or do you have? Not too with? often, but um, certainly have done it. Yeah. You know, there's cases where we didn't shoot a lot of that subject and I'm limited. And so I will have to change that, but uh, in the last few years, I have done that very little because we, we do shoot a lot of that subject and there's always at least one good option to choose from. Uh, do you use a walk on or just a mouse? Uh, I use a mouse. I have my main assistant, Shauna, as you guys, Nate and Jared know, she uses a, a Wacom or Wacom, whatever you want to call it, to do her, um, her cutouts. I'm old school. I've always used a mouse. So that's where my comfort level is. I'm comfortable in, in, in that in that space but you can use both to the same uh degree of of ability so awesome well let's let's go ahead and move on to another image okay 
I'm just going to show you really quick what it, uh, what it would take to, to cut out on white and why I prefer black. Um, as you see the cleanliness of that, once again, I'm going to fill with shift F5. I'm going to fill with 50% gray back there on that background layer. Um, and we're going to cut out Ellie here and just go up under subject select again and see what it does. And her hair is actually pretty, pretty good. This may not be the best subject, but um, where I notice it a lot is where, and I sh we shoot a lot of athletes that have a white uniform. So shooting in a white uniform on a white background does not cut out very well. So if you have a choice and the, and the coach says, well, what uniform do you want them to wear? I, I'd always choose color or black or, or something other than white. Um, white works really good on, on black, but if you're going to shoot them on white, I would use a color uniform. But in this case, so she's got a color uniform. Let's hit that. Um, but as you can see, the hair here is going to be a problem. Um, blonde on a white background is, is tough. And then, as I said before, white on a white background, you can well, see that ball. It did not do a very good job. Well, not only that, Dave, I think you see that if you look at the uniform, you see that white fringing, yeah. you know, that it's really hard to it, cut that out. It doesn't do as good a job on the fringing with the white background. Um, yeah, right there on the leg, you can see it too. Yeah. So it'll do it okay, especially if I know, hey, I want to put this into a white design or a lighter color design. A white background isn't going to be okay, uh, isn't going to be that bad. So, but I would go in again and just clean up those areas um, using this tool. Oops. And I would, you know, you might got to make sure the hardness of your brush matches the, um, the, the crispness of the image. It's a crisp image. So I'm going to hit 90 and as you can see i'm just painting with black along that edge and i'm going to come in a little bit you know that shortcut again for the shift hold down shift and it just helps me draw a straight line in between i'll show you that again so i'll just i'm holding down the shift key and i'm gonna hit oops Whoop. <laughs> do one click and then hold down the shift key and it's just helped me draw a straight line that's and a great time saver it's a good time saver, and it just does an accurate, accurate job. Rather than trying to freehand a fairly straight line, now as I do the uniform and it's kind of moving along, I will just maybe freehand it. People with the Wacom tablet are pretty good at that. I've developed a pretty good hand since I do this freaking every day of my life um, to to come along there and and freehand it pretty cleanly. Um, but the shift key is is great in in connecting two two clicks together as i'm doing here and then yeah as i did an arm or a leg i'm going to oops i kind of took some of that away but as i do an arm or a leg i'm going to always probably use the shift key okay uh i i don't know you even know if i want to show you the hair here it could get ugly yeah well and, and you see how it cut out the hair and there's some hair on her arm yeah. So I would paint some of this back in and then once again, go into that properties palette, make sure I'm clicked on the mask and then hit the select and mask tool, choose the red view. And then we can just try and see how it does. And as you can see, the results are mixed, right? Yeah. Um, it's having a tougher time finding separation there. Um, you know, you could I'll hit cancel. You could come in here and do the opposite of what I did before and really like maybe do your 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 levels and really bump up your whites and really darken your darks to get a little more separation in there. Right. Um, and and then go back in to click on the the select the, the mask, excuse me, hit select and mask and see if that does a little better job along those edge and it's not doing an awesome job, but a little better. Yeah. Yeah. Not bad. A little better or what just happened there. Oops. I have this turned on still. Sorry. Had that background there still turned. So it did kind of a decent job there. And then I can replace that mask again, like I did before. Turn that layer off. Definitely and better. It's a little better. And especially if I do this on a lighter background, as you see, as I lighten this up, it does, that does a pretty good job. So if I wanted to put some 
um, say some text behind her. I did a pretty decent job, you know? Yeah. So I did a pretty, pretty decent job. So any other questions on that? And then we can get into compositing next. So yeah, a few more questions. I think this is really important to talk about. What can a photographer do to make your job easier when they're shooting? You know, you're shooting, you know, you're going to be doing cutouts. You're going to shoot on white or black. I know you definitely prefer black. What other things can a photographer do to make it so the designer has the easiest job of cutting things out? Um, well, like I said, I, I love how you guys share your raw files with us um, so that we can edit that and raw how we we see it going um, and, and make our interpretations on the image as, as we see it, um, you know, because it may be a little different than what Nate chooses to do. Um, so that that's really helpful, I think, in, in terms of the shooting. And if you know you're going to use them for cutouts, um, I love how you you give us a nice um, a nice edge on the on the black where you get us some some edge lighting some rim lighting I think is what you call it yeah um, that's really helpful um, and I think that's especially important when you're shooting a black uniform on black right you need to have an edge he needs to have a place where he can cut out. Absolutely. And and we actually have two strip boxes in that both side uh, in each corner to so that there's a full edge around the body. Uh, I think that that's one of the major things that I have to teach my students to do when they're when they're shooting these type of things. Yeah, here so you can you can kind of see it there. So that helps us a lot. Um, you know, I think it's really helpful to have the designer present when possible so that I can see, hey, is there enough light on his face? Because I'm going to want to make sure we can see his face and um, those kind of things. Just and it's help. It's really helpful when when we do a photo shoot together, Nate and Jaron and myself. Um, there's instant feedback for me to see typically how it's going, so I know there are no surprises later, right? And that's real helpful for me. Yeah, we use the Shutter Snitch app with an iPad Pro. Um, so Dave gets immediately the image pops up and he can see the issues and problems he needs to fix. Uh, so Because it, it's a lot easier to, to shoot it correctly than to try and take care of it in Photoshop later. A uh, couple more questions, Dave. Uh, what about the shadow near her feet? If you want to go back to that last image, uh, do you ever want to leave them in or create a yeah. shadow? Yeah, yeah. I, I do, as a matter of fact, um, at times, especially when I shot on a white background, it's hard to, if I'm going to go use it on a color background, uh, so I've just kind of, you can kind of mimic, it. you know, what? more often than not, I don't paint that back in. I kind of see, I'll duplicate it and I'll fill this and I'll see what, that's the original. I kind of look where the shadows are. And then I, with a brush, just go paint one back in. And I don't know if you want to see how I would paint one back in um, to put it in a design. But let's say I, I want to put her, and I've trimmed it out, and I want to add a, like some shadowing because we, we want to make it look legitimate and real. I'm just going to use a soft brush and kind of paint something. And yeah. I'll clean it up later. Um, but then I go up under blur, Gaussian blur, bump that way up. There we go. Soften really soften up. that, right? Um, and then what I will do from there is I will transform it, distort, kind of flatten it. Oops, I don't know why. Flatten that. Make it much, much flatter, like it would look. You guys are getting the real tricks here today. <laughs> and so that gives it a straight line. And then from there, you know, I will take the opacity down a bit. And I make, and then obviously I would cut out her, her feet, right? If I, 
sometimes uh, that's another trick to speed things up. If I know it beforehand, I'm going to throw her into a design where she's going to be cut off at the shins. I won't cut out her cleats. <laughs> yeah, I'll save that for later. Um, but in this case, I am, and so I would cut out, you know, those areas of her cleats so that it would look legitimate. But um, well, I know ahead, there Jared. there are times where you do want to have like the reflective look, and that in those times, what we'll do in the studios, we'll just shoot it on top of a, a tile board, so that there's automatically a little bit of reflection there. But Dave also will sometimes go ahead and add a reflection. Um, especially when we're shooting on black stuff, but uh, what's easier? Is it to, easier to shoot it or is it easier for you to just do it in Photoshop on a reflective? Um, man, it, that's sixes. I, sometimes it's easier just to Photoshop because um, you would, and there's a lot of tutorials on how to do that, but you would just flip her and inverse her. And right. um, because sometimes when you do it on glass, you get a lot of dust that I have to go in and clean out anyway. And, other stuff but uh with this shadow again i would say too i'd go up in here and add a little noise once you're happy with how it looks um add some noise to it so it doesn't look too fake but you can see there that just adding a little noise it looks textured textured um and then i you know sometimes i will around the foot itself i'll duplicate that layer and just around the feet, it's going to be a little darker than it is spread out. Oops. So sometimes I'll duplicate it and make two, two layers. You see that there, dark in that area. But that looks but great. Anyway, I, it'll look better once those cleats are cut out. But you yes. get the idea. As right? you are as you are making your design decisions and choosing which photos, um, is it? is it really important to remind photographers to give, you know, both angles, turning right, turning left, looking forward, the variety? Yes. Like what, what would be your tips as far as it comes to that? As far as giving a designer what they need, that well, variety. Kind of like what I talked about before, in the capture phase, you want to get, it's better to err on the side of too many photos than too little. Um, because, yeah, you can see that this white stuff is, I'm OCD. This white stuff's really bugging it's driving me. Dead crazy. It's driving me nuts. But um, <laughs> uh, just having a variety, uh, we like to shoot um, them facing both ways in case, you know, where we, we want to throw copy onto something. And uh, it's better to have them looking in the direction of the text than away from the text because you want the, to reader, the reader to read the graphic. So, yeah, facing both directions, um, a wide variety some you know some smiling some you know just shoot a lot i would say i don't know if that answers your questions yeah. oh, that's well, great but... let's uh let's go on to label compositing okay let's jump in um all right let's just do a quick this is if i'm in a hurry i'm going to do a quick cut out of him sorry select subject Let's hope it does a good job. It's done a pretty good job. Let's just use it as is for now. I'm, I'm not going to go clean it, but I want to throw this into, I want to get a file that kind of looks like that. So this photo on the left was shot in a studio and we made it look like he's out on the, the playing field, right? So I'm going to show you how I'd kind of do that. Um, and the one big secret I think I would share the most is I'm, is I'm creating composite. The very last step that I always do is run camera raw one more time over the image. And so this is, this is it with all the layers and stuff. But I, at the very end, I run camera raw one more time to give it a little more pop and to make it feel a little more integrated into that background. So I'll show you that at the end, but just know that my top layer here, as you can see, is that file. But um, let's take this all out um, and get down to the nitty gritty. So what I've done is I taken a file like this that Jaron and Nate have shot. Um, I, I keep a whole folder from the season of what I call field view, view shots where there's different backgrounds that I may use. And then I'll kind of scrape out the, the player and, and know that I'm going to maybe throw something in here 
I, this needs some cleaning up, but I think that's kind of where this, this background that you see here on this image came from. It's just a shot, a game action shot where there was some copy space to the left or the right. And I've kind of taken advantage of that. And I will take this photo and I'll drag him in, size him down. Any questions on that, on kind of where I'm getting my stuff from, but. No, no, you're good. Okay. So I've just taken a game like field view shot that an awesome image that Sharon or Nate have captured already for me. Um, we're going to throw him in. And like I said, this is just straight out of the subject select. Now I would go in and clean. There's some areas here that I would need to clean up, but you get the idea. Um, I'm going to throw him in there. Uh, and then I need to look at where the, the strongest light source is coming from. In the case of before, you can see I have the light over here on, that's stronger over here on the right. So I'm just going to flip that because the his left side is being more lit. Um, so I'm going to add a little bit more of that. And what that is, uh, just so you can see this layer, all I've done is basically I've I, I, we're, our brand is blue. So I've created a new layer. And with a soft brush, maybe at like 40% opacity up here, I hit four for 40%. I've just come in and painted a little bit of blue light. And then I do the blending mode of screen or lighten screen usually works best. Now that might be a little too much blue. So I may desaturate the blue a little bit and just make it feel like a light that's up there. He's got a little bit more light on that side, but I'm just using a blending mode, the screen blending mode and a new layer. I can duplicate that for even stronger light on that side to make it be even more, a little bit more believable. But that's where kind of the, the field lights are coming from. Does that make sense on the lighting, everybody? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go in and add some of these design elements. It is not Houston Hay Mooley, but that's okay. Houston, um, yeah. Houston what's that? Watching. He's not watching right now. So. He's not watching, that's right. So we've got some of those design elements. Um, but that's really important is, is to make sure that the photo fits the background light wise. Uh, that's something that photographers understand, but designers don't always understand. They don't always understand. That's right. Uh, lighting is some, and it's something I've had to learn uh, for sure. So once I'm happy with kind of how that looks and, and maybe he needs, where's his layer? I, I, I would just give a plug again. If you're doing compositing, um, label your images. <laughs> So uh, it's just such a helpful thing, um, especially if someone comes back in and does it. But you can see I did a halfway decent job of labeling my images, but not perfect. But so once that's good, I'm gonna maybe maybe I want to brighten him up just a little bit more, and I'll use curves. And all I'm doing is pulling up the curves just a bit. And then my like I said, my last thing is I'm going to go. Um, I'm gonna hit Shift Option Command E. Um, and that is the shortcut for um, merge visible, right? Yeah. Yep. So I, um, I'm merge visible. I've always forget. I, I'm all, I'm a shortcut guy. So I'm just, I forget all the pull down stuff, but if you don't know it, that's the merge visible. And then I'm going to go into camera raw and run it one more time. And typically if it's for a football or something, I'm going to bump up the clarity a little bit. I'm going to make my color a little cooler in our case. You know, if you're a warmer tone on your brand color, you may want to warm it up. But in our case, we want to cool it down. Um, I'll may, maybe bump up the texture a little bit, maybe sharpen the details up just a bit. And then in curves, maybe I'll bump, bump up the lights and darken my darks just a hair. And then sometimes I'll do some, some things with the skin tones like color mixer. I'll, you know, cool down the skin tones, you know, turn tune down, uh, desaturate my oranges or whatever else, but to make it look good. And if I'm happy with all that, hit okay. And then you can see kind of the before and after. 
So it's a little better product after we've kind of run that. It looks a little more cohesive yeah. and unified. Awesome. And that's kind of my secrets on how I kind of build something. And, and whether I've put this into a, you know, a stadium background or something else, I typically run that, um, that finishing camera raw thing. And I have some presets on my end that I'll use um, for that, that finishing part that I'll, so when I'll do, I'll run camera raw and I'll just go up under here under my presets. And I have some saved presets that speed it up for me. Presets in camera raw, as you guys know, are awesome. Can you, so, can you, can you tell people how to jump into camera raw? That's a question people have oh, posted. So yeah, just uh, shift command a uh, is the quick command or the pull down is filter. And, and I use camera raw. Like I used to, when I would, for years and years used all kinds of little add-ons and filters um but filter camera raw is right there yeah you find it but uh i used all of these filters to help my finishing look have more pop and look better but everything i need in in editing in a photo and editing in a design is right there in camera raw so if you understand it which all of you guys do uh it's such an amazing tool not just for like the initial uh edits but the post-production stuff to use camera raw all the time in the midst of a design it is yeah. incredible so. camera raw is, is underrated uh because you can pretty much do everything in camera raw. It's so quick and so easy we have a video on our channel about how we use camera raw. uh you can go check out on the bou uh photo youtube channel uh as we're finishing up guys go ahead and throw any more questions you have about design or photoshop or whatever into the chat box we're gonna have we're going to pepper Dave with some more questions. Uh, so Dave, when you're doing these composites, when you're seeing other composites made by other designers, what are the kind of the, the mistakes that you see? Like, what are the biggest tell? Well, like, oh, yeah, that fringing is a, is a real telltale sign. Um, you know, and I, here, let's zoom in. Lighting is another one uh, that you talked about. So that, that cutout that it did, uh, really did a pretty good job. We didn't even have to go clean that up. And this is just a web size graphic here. But I mean, there's some things I would clean up here and then in his armpit, I'd probably take that little bright spot out. But um, other things I'm seeing. I, yeah, I, well, you're, I'm well, you're thinking, Dave, yeah. one thing that, that I've seen too is when you're doing compositing, I think it's it's vital to make sure that your levels match, that your blacks match your background, that your whites match your background. Otherwise, it's it's very obvious that it is a composite when your levels aren't matching. Absolutely, yeah. And when you know, and when I when another reason why I um, run that camera raw at the end again is it does help um, even out the levels, like Nate said, and even things out. Um, there's a there's an there's a treatment that goes over, you know, the cutout and the background that helps unify it. When you treat it at together as one, it helps unify it quite a bit. Awesome. Um, the other thing I was going to say is I'm a big fan of like keeping things clean and, you know, believable and not too like crazy on hyper edits and that people over edit or, you know, run that clear clarity um slider a little bit too much or uh those kind of like things there's, there's just too limiter. much going on but that, that's a limiter on clarity yeah um here's a good question this is one you do a lot of How, what are tips or composites for working with multiple subjects overlapping on the same background you're taking multiple players and putting them on the same shot so if I were putting two guys into this design is that yeah kind of two or saying? three or four I, I know that you know what what what's the best practices for when you have to overlap them um, you want to, so we, when we do our, let's say our football, uh, photo shoot, we keep our lighting for the whole season, the exact same. Um, and so making sure that they are shot in similar lighting, um, similar it makes, go ahead. Yeah. Not, not like one wide angle, one telephoto, like the lenses, yeah. selection lenses, similar, the lighting, similar the lightings. Yeah. Those kind of things help them feel. Uh, and then the light source where it's coming from is the same on, on both, uh, images. So, um, and then, you know, 
I don't have another cutout handy. Let me, I, actually, I could grab another one, but um, you know, if there's overlap, you want to make it believable that there's. So what I'll do is I'll go make another layer here and paint with a little black at maybe like 30% and just have it clip to that. So that it looks like there's some natural shadows or something like that if they're next to each other. Does that make right. sense? Yeah. And that's just a soft brush at like 30, 40%. And I can clip it just to that image behind so that it looks a little more believable. You take that out and it's a little less believable. Another thing you could do is you can also, if, if somebody's further away from the camera, you can blur them just a little bit to make it look like they've dropped out. Yeah. Of the field. Yep. And there's some cool things you can do there with um, uh, some blurring. There's the blur gallery. Um, I don't know if you've ever used the tilt shift blur. Um, I don't, this is a fun one that I've been playing with this year. Hold on. I got to turn it. There we go. And kind of move it. But maybe you have his outside edge a little blurry. I don't, yeah. This is a cool one. If you haven't had a chance to play with that tilt shift. No, blur, it's a it fun some, tool. It does some cool things. <laughs> cool looks. But um, yeah, blurring can help as well. Different things to give dimension and depth. Oops. Anything else? Yeah, where where do you recommend if photographers are wanting to improve their Photoshop skills? Do you have any places you say, yeah, this is where I love to go learn things? Um, I usually have a problem in mind. And so I just go to YouTube and Google it um, when I'm going. Uh, I know another spot to where I've learned a lot is I uh, Adobe has some great resources. They have a, a conference called Adobe Max. Yeah. And I think they archive all their um, trainings that they do. And there's there's some presenters there that have presented about compositing other things that I've learned a ton from. Um, but if you can, you know, just search under Adobe Max and search under some of those presenters and, and look under the subject and you know, uh, either Photoshop compositing, photo editing, there's a lot of great stuff that they put out from that Adobe Max conference year in and year out. Um, and I think they're all archived and you can go back and find those. So those are the, the guys that present, the, the people that present at the, those conferences do a tremendous job. And uh, those are some of the best places I've learned a lot of my little tricks from over the years. Yeah. Another issue that we as photographers have is, is we're too control freakish, if, if that's a <laughs> way to say it. Um, how do you, how do you not go down the rabbit hole, Dave, and spend four hours on one thing? What do you, <laughs> what, what's your approach? My approach is I have got, I, uh, it's just, we're so busy. Um, I, I just have to, uh, I don't know. I have to, I have to limit myself because I have other deadlines. Um, and so I, depending on it for me, if I know this is something that is going to get a lot of eyeballs on it um, and it and is going to has a chance to maybe be viral or something else. I'm going to spend a lot of time on that and maybe go down a rabbit hole, really dig deep on everything else. I'm going to just get it done as quick as I can. Be, and, and especially on stuff that like, if a lot of people aren't going to see it, just don't have time to dedicate a lot of your precious time to stuff that, you know, eight people are going to see. So yeah, you want to win. You want to win when the world is watching is kind of a, a theme that we have over in, in, on our team. And, and so win those moments where a lot of people are watching and maybe don't invest as much time when they're not. So. Awesome. Uh, any other questions out there before we finish off? Well, I, I'll tell you, I'm uh, real grateful. I think there's some really good information here for people to learn and uh, like I say, to dive into the new tools in Photoshop and take advantage of it because uh, it's a lot easier to do this than it used to be, isn't it, Dave? Yeah, it is. Oh, so much easier. I I remember cutting out just by hand and it was just doing a cutout took forever. And so you really, 
you were really limited on the amount of designs you can do. And now there's, yeah, we can do so much more, be so much more effective and, and create so many better, better images. So it's going to show too, we didn't get a chance, but shooting dark hair on dark. And, oh yeah. You go ahead and um, that real, quick. real quick. Like I, like I said before, like bump up in curves or levels or something to find good separation. Um, and then just throw that layer away once you're done is real important. But um, I would start with that and just start with one that has real blown out levels and then do your subject select. Just find a little better separation on that. Um, sorry, I don't know what our time constraints are here. You're fine, you can do as long as you want. Oh, that's killing everybody's eyeballs to look at something blown out that bad, but it's a great way to start. Let me copy that to her. And and you may want to even come in here and um, you know dodge that a little. Ooh, sorry, dodge that. But that's going to be tough, um, no matter what you do. And I think. We can kind of come in and once again click on the mask properties panel and get a little better edge on this but it's hard to do dark on dark and light on light types of shots and i would say when we're shooting uh athletes with very dark hair on this black we spend a lot of time making sure that we're lighting that hair so that you know it's easier so dave has something to cut out yeah, and I appreciate that a lot because it it helps. Because you do have to kind of modify a little bit your your lighting depending on uh, the subject's color and hair color and that kind of thing. So, um, but you know, just oops, softer brush and maybe kind of cleaning up here. I would not suggest using this on a light background, <laughs> yeah. the design. But starting kind of like this and then. And then I'd come once again and just copy that. Let's see what that looks like. And I would probably come in overall in curves and brighten her up overall a little bit so that that hair works, but you can see it's doing some weird stuff in there. And that's gonna take some time of really doing that. But um, the best thing is to, you know, use this type of a shot on a, on a colorful or a darker background in it. It's going to look better. You can see right there already that that looks better. Even if I were to use this on a black background, I use often come in here with a with a gray soft brush. Just a little Get bit, a yeah. Little, yeah, nice. maybe add some noise to that, right? Go up here and add noise. Not that much, but something like that. So anyway. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much, Dave. We're grateful for you to, to teach us these things. We'll have you back. We, I'm sure there's going to be a lot more, uh, <laughs> a lot more questions as we, uh, as we move forward, but thanks again. And uh, we're grateful for everybody that joined us today. We'll see you next month on UPAA live.